When we last saw Captain Salty and our friends, they were teetering on top of a crumbling lighthouse in a raging storm at sea. Let's hope Redbeard can help them out of this mess. Captain, could you take us someplace nicer? Someplace nicer, someplace nicer! Hold on! Hold on! That was mind-blowingly incredible! We can go anywhere as long as we hold onto the bottle? Yeah, those are the limits. Pretty cool, huh? That's sick! Oh, don't throw up on the bottle. Look, there's Rocky Shore! Well, Valerie and your friend, uh, Mattress. That's Matthew? Well, if it were news, I'd remember it. What are you kids doing here? Ivan the Red brought us here. Where'd he go? He doesn't like to meet new people. He'll show up when he wants. The famous Captain Salty, in person. How about an interview? Call my crab. Mr. Shore, I loved it when you were signing off in that seagull. Yeah, 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 a real scream. Now why don't you kids run along? I'm gonna interview a lifeguard who rescued a puppy, a real human interest story. I'm gonna get a million hits on YouTube. It was hysterical when you said, signing off for Quahog Corner News, and then... <laughs> Kids, we should go! Ivan? Puta! Back to the House of Light! I mean lighthouse, sorry. Come, kids, bring the bottle! Flying rats! Now I'm gonna have to get a new jacket. You kids... Where did everybody go? Hey, Mr. Shore, we're here for an interview. Look, kid, I got bigger problems. Ooh, a puppy. Coochie, 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 coochie. Sure, I, I really wouldn't do that if I were you. He, uh... Ah, oh, lobster Newberg! Keep that Due to technical difficulties, we now return to our regularly scheduled program. All good things come to an end, and as the genius Fyodor Dostoevsky says, we must accept fate obediently once and for all. And I say it with Chekhov's favorite emotion, laughter through tears. <laughs> Farewell until we meet again, and no more shaking of the bottle, my new little imp of a friend, eh? or there will be crime and punishment. I like you. Who knew? Das Vadanya! <laughs> All right, I have to get these clams to Mrs. Salty or she's gonna wring my little neck. Get it? Clams, little neck, huh? Huh? Nothing. Hoi there, hoi. Max, I didn't know you were coming. Is the professor with you? Oh, no. He said he'd meet me here. Well, he's not here yet. But while you wait for him, you want to stay with the kids? Oh, aye, aye, Captain Salty, sir. <laughs> and who's this guy? Oh, this is Max. He's Professor Ticonderoga's assistant, apprentice, associate, factotum. He's a real jack of all trades. And who's this professor guy, anyway? Oh, he's an adventurer, the world's foremost authority on illustration. Telling you about him won't do him any justice. Let me show you. I just so happen to have here a few portable motion devices, which I invented. Here, each of you take one. A view, Max? I'm pretty sure these have already been invented. Hey, Maestro, how about a little musical accompaniment? You got it. From the highest peak to the deepest sea and everywhere in between From the Arctic snow to the Amazon flow, there's nowhere he hasn't been If you happen to brave the African sun or make tea time with the queen You'll find Professor Ticonderoga and his magnificent machine He's not constrained by the earth, thin veiled into the stars he goes Forgotten ways and tongues and secrets of traveling time he knows What he sees in his mind he reveals with his pen from his pen adventure flows If there's something worth knowing it's certain Professor Ticonderoga knows Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, 
in a top hat and cane unless he's wearing a toga. Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, he's off again in his magnificent machine. So join with him now, you've got nothing to lose, there's always a surprise. A journey with him will expand your mind, you won't believe your eyes. You'll soon discover your hand can draw whatever your eyes have seen. Join Professor Ticonderoga in his magnificent machine. Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, at work in his lab, unless he is doing his yoga. Ticonderoga, Ticonderoga, with no book and pen, he's off again in his magnificent machine. Oh, hey kids, how's the movie? Great, great. Whoa, 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 that must be the professor now. <laughs> what is this that you are doing? It's like a sequence. All the time I'm going to up chop the vomit. Breaking news. Professor Ticonderoga has just arrived at Coman Corner. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, Professor. Will the submarine be okay here? Oh, no problem. What are they going to do? Give us a parking ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Salty, you old sea dog. How are you? Upright on sturdy legs and sound as a ship's bell. And shake like one, two. Ah, uh, the crabby tones of Krabby Crab. How's about taking your noisy submarine to another continent? Or better yet, another planet? Sorry, still adjusting from Venus time. Who are these delightful youngsters? We've met. I'm Valerie, Captain Salty's niece. Oh, Valerie, you've grown like an antenna. And this is my friend Matthew. A distinct pleasure. You please, easy. The professor is the utmost authority on teaching people how to draw. You want to learn to draw something? Yeah. Absolutely. OK, so Max, you must have some drawing supplies in there, that bag of yours. Right here, professor, way ahead of you. OK, so what will we draw? How about drawing a quiet, peaceful still life? so I can draw a quiet, peaceful Brett while I'm sleeping. Why don't we draw a Krabby Crab? Oh, good night, nice OK, so it all starts like this. To draw a Krabby Crab is fairly simple. All you have to know is how to draw an oval. An oval shape is the basis for everything for Krabby Crab. So just practice drawing an oval first, and then we add another oval and another oval. To add his claws in, we add another two ovals. So now one, two, three, four, five. Five ovals total, and you've basically drawn Krabby Crab. The two pupils are, guess what? Ovals. So we just draw them in. And then he's always kind of crabby, so we give him a crabby look. Now I make these lines round because the eye is round. So if you just draw it straight, it makes the character look flat. To make the character look three-dimensional, you draw them rounded like this. Now he also has some uh, extra skin, some wrinkles at the end of the eyelid, see? So now it looks like it's a little wrinkle there, like it has just a little too much skin. Now his eyebrows are half circle. So this, you, you can draw it half circle this way, and then you can draw a half circle that way. Now those are a little too big, we're gonna cut them down, but what happens is, is that if you just realize it's a half a circle, and then you're sort of gonna make a crescent moon out of it, and you can go back and erase that one line, and then what you do is you start to make them look a little hairy. Now, the thing is, is you don't put a ton of lines in there. What you do is you draw one little clump of hair sticking out, and then maybe a second little clump of hair sticking out. At the end, just put a couple of lines. And then one line overlaps and comes down. And another little one that way, another that way. Bring it back, and there are his eyebrows. 
So now he's got some skin that comes down from underneath his eyebrow that joins into his body. And that's how his eyes are connected to his head. And then he's got the big mustache, which is again, sort of a half moon, I mean, crescent moon. Now these little bumps down here are also what we use for hair, especially in a mustache, okay? Now what happens though is the mustache is hidden behind these claws. So you only really see this part of the mustache. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna erase some of these lines that are inside the eyes, just to make the eyes a little clearer. And then he's got, from lack of sleep, he's got some circles under his eyes. And then his shell goes off at an angle like this. You see it's following the oval that you made for the body. So it goes off like that. And then his big claws are here. So the claws we'll put in first, okay? Let's just erase what you can see inside of it. So what would happen is that one claw comes back, okay? And this is the claw that moves. In, in, in types of crustaceans, only one claw moves. The other is all shell. So this one is the one that moves. So it has a little bump on top of it. And the other part of the, the claw, right there, is solid. So the whole thing is, would be solid. See, it actually looks like a little bird's mouth, if you think about it. But of course, you don't want to stick your finger in there, because then you'll get pinched. So the same thing happens on the other, where the, you have the first part of the, the uh, claw that moves, have a little bump, and then Here's the claw, and I, we have it opened a little bit. And again, we go back, we'll let's erase a little bit inside. I'll give you time to catch up a little bit. And now, this, just this, this is the bottom of his body right there. And we put a little bottom lip there because this is where his mouth is in here. And now we have to put his back legs on. So, his back legs come up, they go around, and they come down. So you see one, two, three pieces. One, two, three pieces. And you won't be able to see the other two, but you'll be able to see just a little piece of them. And the same thing on the other side. It will go up, it will come down to two, and then the third one, this is called drawing through. And you should do that a lot. So you should always try to draw through the character, okay? So you, so you can get the thing, get the shape right, and then you can go back and erase it. Like, don't guess, always draw it through. And the second and the third, the third legs. So there's, a, there's our rough drawing of, of Krabby in, in blue. Then we take another pencil, we take a 2B pencil, and we would go back and we would start darkening things in. So for example, we would work on the pupil first, okay? I always try to do the pupil first, see, so then he starts to come alive. Now think about this lesson too, is that you can actually, if, if any point in this lesson that you get a little too lost, if I'm drawing too fast, you can always pause it and go back and then take a look at what I did and then start it again. So I'm just following all the, the major blue lines. And the reason I like to draw in blue first is that it, it won't show up. If you put this drawing on a Xerox machine when this is all done, it, this blue will not show up. So all you'll have is the line from the, from the pencil. So that's called non-repro blue. And they're available in all different art stores. You can pick them up almost any place. Okay, and then we're gonna, gonna darken, really darken the bottom part of his eyebrows. And then I'll color that in right now. I'll just, just so you can see, because he's, he's got, he's gray. And then the same with the next eyebrow. And I'll color that in. Now to make his eye, 
lids look round, what we do is we do a little shadowing with them. And so what will happen is that you do some light shadowing on the outside, and as it gets towards the center, it gets less. So you think of the center as, as being very light and the edges are being a little darker. And it, of course, if you think you've done it too much, you can always go in and shadow the whole thing and just erase in the center, and that'll give you that same look. Now, he'd be a little darker underneath here where the eyelids are, because that'd be, that it would sh that'd be shadowing from the eyebrows, okay? And now his mustache is the same as his eyebrows. They get a little shadow gray too. And again, you can put the drawing lines in any way you want, any way you want. You don't, don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to, around the edge of the mustache, I'm just gonna darken it up. And now I'm gonna do the first, the first claw, all right? And this claw, the claws are a little, cause they're red towards the edges. So they're just a little shadowed, a little bit at the edges because they're sort of a light color and they're edged in red. So you can just put a little, little bit in there. Same thing on the other one. You just, all you do is just tracing over the same line you already made. And you can make it just a little darker on the edge. Okay, and same thing at the bottom, inside of his mouth there lower lip and then you can just trace all the back legs and I'd shadow them just a little bit shadow the first claw here just on the sides okay now do the other back legs oh get that one leg I missed that one leg And then if we put a little shadow on the ground around them. And of course you can always go back and touch things up and make things look a little bit nicer. But there you have Krabby Crab. Hey, Salty, <laughs> how did your drawing come out? Hey, that's not me. Sorry, I only draw what I see. Excuse me, who's got the submarine double parked in the fishing lane? Uh-oh. Uh, that's mine. We were just about to go. Max, pack up, we're leaving. Officer, what brings you out this evening? I read some odd reports of strange things in the water. I think people have seen the professor's submarine. Oh, well, nice meeting you. It was fun. Yeah, like a pot of boiling water. Salty, always a pleasure. Say hi to Mrs. Salty for me. You're always welcome at Kohan Corner. She'll be sorry she missed you. Professor, where are you going? Have dinner with the man in the moon. Soup's on. Breaking news. Mrs. Salty has just arrived with dinner. Seafood surprise. So gather round. There's plenty for everyone. Salty, get out the bowls. Valerie, we can pull up a stool for your friend. Oh, get it while it's hot. <laughs> Officer Morrison, would you be staying for dinner with us? Thanks. Uh, I like to hold the supper for me. Wise man. That smells like low tide. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Seafood surprise? Where's the clams? I ate them all. That's the surprise. You must be full belly. Oh. Eat up, kids. <laughs> Maestro, little dinner music, please. Yes, ma'am, at your service. <laughs>